A growing number of devices on the market allow people to track different health metrics, such as blood pressure, activity levels, and sleep. But the raw data collected by those devices often isn't available to users. Engineer Kyle Machulis is on a mission to change that. He hopes his efforts will help programmers develop better ways to integrate and manage personal health information. So in terms of devices that I find interesting, uh, they're really kind of run the gamut of what you're tracking for yourself. Uh, first off, there's the uh, Zio Sleep Tracker, which allows you to actually put on this little headband here, which is a one sensor, pretty much EEG. It reads the uh, electrical signals on the surface of your brain. And as you're sleeping, it can track when you're in deep sleep, when you are uh, just getting to sleep, when you're having sort of a restless time sleep, and it's really interesting in the fact that not only can you send the data to their service for them to give you sort of an analysis of your sleep quality, there's actually a port on the back that allows you to stream your sleep data in real time out of the device. In terms of pedometers, which are really, really popular today because everyone's walking all the time and so it's this sort of ephemeral number that just kind of pops up and then when you upload the data, you kind of feel better because it's like, oh, I walked this much today and I didn't even realize it. Um, the Fitbit has been really wonderful in terms of making it just work. Uh, it's wireless so that whenever you walk next to your computer, it automatically syncs and that data gets uploaded to a website and then you can see how, how much you walked that day, how many calories you've burned, and it even has the ability to also track sleep quality in a different method than the Zio. The Body Media armband has been really interesting in the fact that it has so many sensors in it in this, at the same time. Uh, there's not only an accelerometer like the uh, Fitbit, so it can tell which way you're moving and how you're moving. Uh, it also has a, a GSR sensor, which is basically measuring how much uh, your skin is sort of micro-sweating. Uh, it's been used in everything from polygraphs to stress meters, uh, but it's actually a really good way to see how much stress your body is under. It's somewhat noisy, but it works. Um, finally, there's the actual EEGs, the actual um, electroencephalograph that allow you to sort of read the surface of the, uh, read the electrical signals on the surface of the brain. So these were actually made to control video games. So what would happen is say you're playing some video game where you're a wizard and usually you would hit a button and it would cast a spell. Now what you can do is you just put on the headset and think in a certain way and the goal is to make your thinking that button so you can just think and it will cast that spell. Now whether that works is a really interesting question and one that's still up for debate. So the reason that I do this is sort of twofold. First off, uh, consumer devices get data from consumers. When you walk, it is your steps that are making the numbers on that device go up. When your heart beats, it's your your heartbeat that is causing that pulse rate to be relayed to your computer. You actually should own that data. And right now with current business models for these products, usually you upload that data and then you have to pay to get it back off a website or something like that. So with what I do with the drivers and the software that I write, it allows customers and developers to get their own data and to own it and to be able to view it and aggregate it however they want. In terms of my own focus for this, I have sort of a feedback process where I work on code for this health equipment and that allows me to actually get up, get out of my chair, stop being sedentary and get outside. Because once I write the software, then I need data to fill in the software, which means I need to go out and bike or run or climb or do some sort of activity that I really like to do. It gets me away from the computer, but while I'm out there, then I'm creating data that allows, that I can then come back and analyze with the software. So basically I'm coding to get outside and then going outside to code.